Hey, for everybody tuning in right now, we're gonna start a little, the countdown's gonna go just a few more seconds and then we're gonna get this thing going because it's two o'clock. Thanks everybody for tuning in today. My name is Matt Pierre. We've got a great topic we're gonna be talking about. Of course, I am monitoring the chat today. And don't forget, level up every day. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Matt Pierce. I'm the Learning and Video Ambassador for TechSmith Corporation. Glad you could be here with us today. We had a week off last week. And of course, you come back and you change everything. You change your location, where you're living, your setup. You, we've, I've changed literally almost everything. And things weren't working, so we're sorry for getting started a little bit late today. But we're glad that you're with us. We've got a great show. We're going to be talking about writing scripts. Now, I know we just talked about writing scripts. We're going to bring a much more focused point of view from our own tech smithies and on, on Andy Owen and Justin Simon. We're going to be talking about writing scripts and give us yeah, stories about what we've done, what works and how to make that something practical. Cause we know most of us don't actually like writing scripts in terms of having to do our own work there. Cause it seems like be a lot more work when you, especially if you're a subject matter expert. So, but before we do that, I want to jump into one thing that we like to talk about, of course, is the TechSmith Academy. The TechSmith Academy is a free online learning platform that you can learn about all sorts of video creation topics, including writing scripts, creating storyboards, shot lists, lighting your videos, which is an important subject, recording great audio, which is an even more important subject. You can learn about screenwriting, or sorry, screen recording, and things like you know, writing job, creating job aids and writing helpful help, all part of helping your audience better understand the things that you do, whether you're creating software, documentation for internal for your organization, whatever it might be, we've got something there for you that we hope helps. All right, with that said, before we, we jump into today's topic, let me just say this. So I have worked at TechSmith for a good long time. I think I've, I talk about it, you know, it's been, we're going up on 15 years, which nowadays seems like I might as well be ancient. But I have the great pr privilege of working with these two gentlemen. Uh, Andy Owen, he is a video production specialist at TechSmith Corporation. I've uh, been working with him a few years. He, he has actually helped the, the vision of the TechSmith Academy come to realization early on. So I, someone I look to and trust, I learned, have learned so much from him and continue to learn about video creation and editing, all of those great things. But not only that, he's just a great human being and someone who uh, has great insight and he takes a lot of great video and uh, helps TechSmith make a lot of great video. And then we also got Justin Simon. And Justin, funny enough, I actually met Justin because I hired his brother as an intern at TechSmith. And Justin has been working on a content team. He knows all sorts of stuff about social uh, SEO, uh, search engine optimization. And he's a great writer and someone that I have awesome conversations with and he, he gets me excited about some of these topics and doing things and, and leads the charge, not only with telling it, talking about, hey, this is what we could do, but this is how he, he we could do it. And he goes and leads for So both these, I'm so excited they're both here. You know, I know they're probably like thinking, oh my gosh, what have I got myself into? But I want to welcome to the Visual Lounge, Andy Owen and Justin Simon. Welcome guys. Well, thank you. Andy, you know, you're clear as day. Well, we're going to yeah. forget. It doesn't matter, right? Because it's, it's uh, less important. Video guy. We can. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're always most, well, mostly you used to be behind the camera. Now you're in front of it a whole bunch more, right? It is true. I was going to say uh, uh, due to quarantine. And this looks great, by the way. I'm so enjoying my own preview. Uh, and I, I've told you guys behind the scenes, uh, my wife also works for TechSmith and she's right now running a uh, live Snagit webinar as well. So we are just eating up bandwidth in our house. So hopefully her, her screen looks clearer than mine. But uh, yes, I, I've been in front of the camera lately uh, on our YouTube channel uh, talking about kind of some quick video tips, uh, some easy things you can do to get better at video, uh, including have a clear picture. No, it hasn't included that, but it should now. But, but we know that picture quality is way less important than audio quality. So That's true, how good. do I sound? You sound great. And, well, and Justin, Justin, this is this is not. We know this is something that you don't like necessarily to do is be the one on camera. Oh, I think you're muted, Justin. You muted yourself. We wouldn't have a Zoom call type thing without someone muting themselves. <laughs> oh, uh oh. Let's see if I can unmute him. Well, you know, it's just gonna be me and him talking. 
<laughs> just me and Andy. I'll talk yeah. if Justin has the clear video. Yeah. It's always something. So, oh, you just say the words, Andy, and Justin will move yeah. his mouth. So. Okay, I'm going to speak for you, Justin. Start start miming now. And uh, so today, no, content um, SEO. I cannot seem to. I'm, hey, I'm, just, I'm, Justin's just going to jump. Dro just drop off, Justin. Come right back. So we'll see what happens. We've had some technical difficulties this morning, but Andy, you know, we're great. We're yeah. glad you guys are here because we want to talk about scripting. Um, so be, anything else you'd want to say about yourself before we get going pe that you'd want to let people know? Because I think you've got a lot of experience and maybe that would be helpful for people. Right. Well, I appreciate everything you said. I mean, even the funny thing is even talking about the TechSmith Academy as far as like shaping it early on, you know, I kind of forgot that that was really, it, it feels like it's just been something that we've had for so long. I forget that. Yeah. I mean, you, you came to me and, um, the other video producer at the time we had Barrett and we're, we were talking about ideas for it and how we we're going to film it. And, uh, I forgot we really, that was from the ground up. It was, it was your idea and we just started moving on it. And so, uh, it's, it's, it's something I'm, I'm proud to have worked on, and uh, I love seeing like where it's gone since you know the the episodes that we did. And now I'm wondering if Justin has audio. But... Can you guys hear me? Oh yes. Hey. Okay. I, I was I was stuck in the green room. You didn't you didn't let me into the the show. Okay. So it said uh, there was no way for me to let you in, or else I would have. <laughs> <laughs> we'll blame the tech. It's okay. I'm here. Yeah, so we were just talking about the the early days of the TechSmith Academy, and I think I think one thing that uh, stood out to me in those days, Andy, is uh, I, I had made I'd been working on video here and there, like a lot of screen tutorial stuff, and this was our first kind of like my really first big production around story, where we're going to do things. Mm -hmm. And I think the, for me, the big takeaway from that was, especially with scripting, is I wrote the words for most of those early Academy courses, and I had a vision for what I thought it would look like. But I remember you and our other video producer at the time, uh, uh, Barrett, telling me like, yeah, this doesn't really work. Right. Uh, and I, I think that's, that's been something that stuck, has stuck with me about thinking about like, you got to think beyond your script, especially with camera productions, you just yeah. can't think about the, what's going to be said. You got to think about what mm -hmm. it's going to look like with that. It's very three dimensional in that way, right? You have to you have to not just write something that sounds good or reads good, uh, excuse me, reads good, <laughs> uh, reads well, um, but it also has to be something. Well, you know, what are we going to talk about? This it's it's nice to have kind of ethereal thought and and good ideas, but at the same time, like, what are people going to be watching? when uh, we're talking about this, you know, lofty idea. And so it's just one of those things that visuals, obviously in, in a medium like video play an incredibly important role. And so whether we're talking about um, storyboarding, which isn't always part of the script writing process, but can be, uh, or if we're just talking about kind of making notes in the sidebar, like, you know, hey, when he's saying this, uh, uh, include uh, this on screen, um, which is actually more what I do lately, but that's jumping ahead a bit, I think. Um, it's just kind of leaving notes for myself as to what I'm envisioning on screen while I'm saying, you know, uh, A, B, and C. My video yeah. is like getting worse right now, isn't it? <laughs> like I'm just devolving it into nothingness. Well, we can always just take your camera picture. We'll just put your little icon up, the icon up there with long flowing hair. Yeah. So, oh, great. Yeah. I mean, I think, but it's, it's such a good point, right? Like, because if you look at any kind of video production that's like, I mean, Professional, like, means I guess, means you get paid for it. But like, you look at TV, you look at mm -hmm. movies, and everything is shot with such intention, and it's easy to mm -hmm. forget that you're marrying not just what's being said, but what's happening. And I forgot that, like, or I didn't realize it was going to be such a big deal. I'm like, no, you just point the camera at them, and you're like, well, how did they get into that room, or how how do they know? And I, and I think yeah. that's an important part of scripting is is remembering that, um, even though it's not everything, it's but it's a good portion of it. Well, I'd even tell you too, like I'm, I'm sitting here writing these scripts for, for videos that we're doing on YouTube right now. And, and even if I'm walking through a process of software I'm very familiar with, Camtasia and Snagit, I, I talk about, you know, okay, you're going to click the create button and then uh, import uh, from images. Nope, that's not what it is. It's image from, you know, and, and it's, it's just even remembering the words is difficult. So really walking through the process you plan on showing on screen while you're scripting helps immensely because you can actually... Uh, put feet to your words and say, oh, I, I missed that uh, at this point, I actually need to go into the theme manager, not just import a theme randomly. There's there's a whole other you know process that I forgot about because it's just become such a habit, you forget that there's seven steps, not five. 
Right. So let's, Justin, now that you're here and you have audio, uh, tell us, is there anything that we didn't, I didn't say about you that you'd like the audience to know about yet before we get ta- ta- chatting with you two about scripting? Well, you said Andy was a great human and you left that out about me. So I think that's, uh, <laughs> well, that's the first thing I'd say. But, you know, other than we don't want to exaggerate. I mean, no, it's, but it's, you are a great human and I, I appreciate it. I was glad we were both off camera, though. <laughs> don't show us left. You guys are looking. No, I. <laughs> what the? <laughs> That's the last time I come on this podcast. Um, no, I think I think I think you covered it. You know, I've been here since 2011 and done a whole bunch of different content roles. Um, now Andy and I get to kind of jam on the YouTube side of things, and I think it's interesting because we both come to it with very different perspectives. Like you had said, you come to it with a much more maybe visual eye to uh, to what it means to script write. And for me, I come from the writing background. So I'm very much into like, what are the exact words being said at this time and how to sort of, um, you know, tell that message in, in a more defined way. So Andy and I have to balance each other out because I'll put things in a script and this has happened many, many times. And I'll say, yeah, but what do I show there? What what am I supposed to, what am I supposed to display as this, as these words are being said? And so like, it's, it's a good balance to be able to, to work together on those things because I'm certainly not a video expert. Um, you know, you're talking about how does somebody come into a room and, and do all those things for that, that type of thing. My mind is not even close to a- anywhere near that. Um, but I think as far as for the types of videos that folks are going to be making with TextMas software, whether it's a demo video or a training video or even something for, you know, an online class, it really it doesn't have to be that complex. I think sometimes uh, script writing uh, can feel really, really overwhelming. And so I think that's some of the stuff that I want to get into today is just how to make it a little bit easier on folks. Yeah, for sure. And I think um, I see a question that I think is going to be really good to, to, to get going here. But I want to talk a little bit about kind of that, that most recent experience of what you guys are doing, because I think it, there's, it's telling in terms of the, the work process. It, you know, that Andy is bringing this video perspective. You're bringing the words perspective. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the work that you guys have been doing together for our YouTube channel. Cause, and either one of you can answer. I just, I'm curious, yeah. tell us like, what, what are you making and why is it that you're like, why not just have Andy do everything? Cause he's on camera. He's, he's, I mean, he's, you know, why not have him write the scripts too? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Why not? Come on, you can do it all. <laughs> so what what we're doing right now is we are creating complementary content. So we are taking some of our content that we've already created for the blog, and we are creating compliments to that for our YouTube channel. And so really, that is a, a benefit for the user. So we're trying to, whether you want to watch a video or you want to read a step-by-step blog post, we want to be able to give you that information. And so what the process sort of started how I even got involved with this was because a lot of the blog posts, either myself or other folks on my team had written at that point. And so we had all this background knowledge of what the actual videos were going to be about from the topic side. And so I just started working with Andy to try to break that out in a more defined way. And that's where for us, it actually went a little faster because we were able to take the basic headlines and things like that out of our blog posts and turn those into the sections for our videos where it got more complicated was uh, a blog post can be you know upwards of 2000 words and our scripts have to be much more defined especially for youtube and so that's where the balance comes in between uh andy and i starting to work on that i don't know if andy if you have anything to add yeah no one wants to listen to me speak for 2000 words so uh, we try to (laughs) we try to limit it (laughs) Um, but but it does. I mean, every now and then, uh, even even when we were going through and picking topics for the blog posts, uh, turning into YouTube videos, it was you know Justin suggesting here's some that are playing really well uh, with SEO. We should have an accompanying video, and and I can't think of a specific example, of course, off the top of my head. But I remember there was a few that I was like, I think that one might be a tougher video to make just in regards to me explaining something visually. Like, yes, it's a really good blog post, but I don't know that it's an interesting topic for a video. Um, And and it may be someday that we still go back and do some of those topics, Um, but we have, you know, a plethora to choose from. And so we we went through and and decided some of the ones that would be great for our users to learn from, uh, that would be easily uh, demonstrable through uh, Camtasia or Snagit. 
things that we can teach people in Audiate. Um, and so there's just a lot of uh, opportunity through those blog posts. And so it was actually like first picking the topics that would show really well. Um, but, but writing the script was made a little bit easier because those blog posts already existed. So we didn't have to, you know, reinvent the wheel in, in any of them. We were able to just kind of take from them. Um, and in, in some really like, they, they may be playing well, but maybe they're three years old. And so the process has changed behind how you do the, the, um, the topic. Uh, so, for example, I'm just trying to think like add captions to a video is a video that we made. Um, how do you add captions to a video? Well, since we made that blog post, you know, whenever it was, uh, we've since added Audiate to our uh, software. We've added Nomia. Uh, and both of those have different ways of making captions. And, and honestly, at the time, we weren't really talking about YouTube. And YouTube has a great captions feature. Camtasia has two different captions features, one on Windows, one on both Windows and Mac. And so there's just so many different ways that not only uh, were we able to take the blog content and update it uh, into a YouTube video, we then also were able to go back and update the blog post to reflect uh, our more current way of adding captions. Yeah, and, and, and I love this coming together, right? That you're not just trying to recreate or make new content always. That There's lots of topics that you need to fill in gaps or video could obviously enhance uh, what you're talking about. So so one of our users today um, asked, it's, it looks like it's Billy, if I've got that right, is asking, how do you get started? So you guys talked a little mm -hmm. bit about this, right? Like this idea of like, oh, we've got this content, we're picking topics. And I think that's probably a, a, you know an easy way to start is if you have topics that you can convert. But like when it comes to starting to script, like what is the process? And I know you've probably done it in several different ways. So what's working well for you today? So I can speak to what works for me in particular, and then and then maybe Andy can chime in for what works for him as well. But for me, so the way I I do scripts is I template everything out. So I start with an outline and and ask a few simple questions right at the start, which always uh, speak back to the audiences. And this is an exact uh, tool that I pulled over from blog writing. And so we ask questions like, who's the audience? Uh, why do they care about the video you're going to make? <laughs> and, and, what, and how will they apply it? And so those are just three very basic questions to ask yourself even before you start writing your script. And then that way, it'll put you in a frame of reference to understand who this is for. Um, because sometimes you could write a very, even a similar um, topic, but it might be a sales situation where you're trying to describe this particular feature set versus, uh, you know, somebody who's onboarding. It's the exact same topic, but the audience is completely different. And so you want to frame that up a little bit differently. And from there, I just really just outline my points, go down, start with an intro, and I just try to piece it all together in an outline and then build out from there. Um, the step-by-step -step stuff Andy can and can probably speak to more so as far as this process is building those out. But I found the same is true with blog writing for me and script writing is if I can get 50% of the way there in an outline, it makes it much less intimidating because now I'm not staring at a blank page or a blank um, you know piece of paper or something. I can start with something and, and get rolling from there. Yeah, I, I, I love that. And I have a follow-up question, but I want to hear from Andy first if there's because I'm sure there's some differences here for you, especially since if you're the one being on camera. Right. Yeah, I I will say though, um, I come into this with much less writing experience. You know, Justin comes into it with writing experience, I come into it with video experience. Um, and so for me, the challenge is always like I'm not a writer. I don't just sit down and start typing it out. So so I will start speaking it. Um, and I will just start especially if if I'm collaborating with someone else on a script, it's a lot easier because um, they may start the script and I jump into it and say, oh, I'd never say that. And that's my kind of jumping off point is, would I even say that? Does that sound like me? And um, I'm not playing a character. You know, I might be a little more formal on camera just because I am reading a script, but at the same time, I still want it to sound like something I would say. So read it out loud. If it sounds like something you'd say, you're on the right track. Uh, if it sounds buttoned up and, and not at all, uh, the way you'd phrase things, move on. As far as the process of things, um, you know, Justin was pointing out that you know you have the template, you have kind of the, hey, this is Andy from TechSmith. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to do this, and really that's as much as you need for an intro outside of um, kind of introducing the topic because people just want to get into the topic, they want to get into the content, um, unless you really have to elongate the intro. For us, you know, it's it's keeping it short and keeping them engaged uh, into whatever it is we're going to teach them. So uh, if if the topic's not there within the first 30 seconds. We're probably missing the mark. Um, another thing I thought was interesting, 
is, um, and this isn't something I can speak to because we, we have uh, uh, Troy Stein works, you, you know, uh, with a couple of our teams with the customer education team. And he did some videos just for fun that we decided to put on our YouTube channel because they were really good. And one of the things I like about his videos is they come with these downloadable project files so people can follow along. Because I think one of the things people don't like uh, when watching a video is too much uh, thought and not enough doing, right? People mm -hmm. want action, they want actionable items. So they want to be able to follow along in your video. And if you show them something too quickly or you don't go into the details of what you're working on, then they don't really catch it. Um, and so I like that he included those files. For me, it's more an issue of, if I'm working on something in Camtasia, I try and point out that, hey, if I'm using a call out, you can grab any one of these call outs and, um, and, and it's the same process basically. Um, I try to keep it focused on the content and not the how to follow along, but I also realize that people want to be able to follow along. It's kind of a weird balance. Um, so, so I try to make it a, a process that people can repeat as they're watching the video um, and and uh, go from there. Yeah, I lost the topic. I, thought I lost what I was going to say after that. <laughs> That's fine. Because one, one of the questions that I have as Justin was talking, it made me think about this because I know if he's writing things that you're basically performing, right, Andy? And I know you've got your hand in there. You're making it sound like yourself. So there, you got your Andy-isms and it's, it's you. Right. It's not Justin. Um, yeah. And I know you've done that. You've written scripts for other people at TechSmith as well. Mm -hmm. um, what's the way you go about getting that written so it is for that other person and not just you? Because I know I write in my own voice, right? Like I can hear what I'm going to sound like. I know how I'm going to adjust it because there's on-camera mat versus normal mat and on-camera mat is a little bit more subdued than normal mat spaz. Um, but like, yeah. you know, but so I know how to make those adjustments for myself, but how do you do that well for someone else when, when you're not going to be the person on camera, but you're still have in charge of creating that script for them. This reminds me of, uh, for a while we had uh, a series of Snagit videos that I, I hope a lot of people watching had seen with Aaron uh, in them. And uh, myself and uh, Doug Brunner were writing those scripts for a while. And so I remember we would write them, we would go through a draft. He he comes from a tutorial background. I come from more of a, you know, entertainment kind of video background. So we'd try and merge those two styles together. Um, and in the end, we thought we would have something good. And then we'd say, you know what, hang on, neither of us have to read this out loud. And we would pull Aaron into the final meeting just for a quick half hour read through. And as we're reading through, we would encourage her. Um, and we even had notes in the script that said, Aaronify this, um, because we knew this might not be how she'd say it. And so we would Aaronify things. Um, and she, little does she know that we call it this, to this day, we still kind of say, hey, Andy, Aaronify this. <laughs> like when, when uh, people are making notes in my scripts, why don't you Aaronify this? And actually it would be Andyifying it, but uh, I digress. Um, the point is, yeah, we need to have the person who's actually going to read it, who's actually going to go through it, uh, give it a once over, kind of read through and say, uh, I wouldn't say that. Or if you hear them stumbling, sometimes they'll be nice and they'll try and just kind of, you know, barrel through uh, the video or the, excuse me, the script, even though it's not comfortable. Um, but if you can hear them struggling, stop right there and say, you know, what? How, would you say that differently? How else could we say that? Let's try saying this instead. Um, because, yeah. It, we all have heard an unnatural script and it's terrible. I mean, it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't sound good. It distracts us from the point of the video because now instead of actually focusing on the content, we're focusing on the poor writing. Um, and you don't want to do that. Yeah, for sure. Oh, I love so that. Aaronify your videos is my tip basically. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I, I love that. Um, Justin, anything you would add to that since I know you're, you're writing a lot of things for a lot of people and you know, yeah, I think I think Andy's spot on, and and we, it's tough because you know you don't always know the working relationship with the person that you're trying to write for, um, especially if you're writing for maybe a technical SME or some somebody like that who, you know, um, you're not working with on the daily. So Andy and I work together, so we can kind of get each other's mannerisms even a little bit better than than um, bringing in somebody else. But I think to his point about. Um, you know, writing your script in the way that you would talk is probably one of the most important things you can do. Um, because to his point, if you, if you don't sound like you would sound, uh, it is, it's more distracting than it is helpful. And I think there are times where both of us working on scripts, uh, Andy might write something and I turn it to maybe more how I would say it. And then you got to go back because of course you wouldn't say it that way. And so it's ebbing and flowing in that regard. But for the scripts that I've had to write personally for myself, I always find it easier 
uh, rather than write, because I write much more formally than I talk. And so two of the things that I do when I have to write a script, particularly an intro, um, is I will use the like talk to text feature in Google Docs and just talk out my intro. And it will be, you know, maybe it's even 60% there, but then I can clean it up and I can get a better idea of how I would actually say it. Um, or like Andy had mentioned, Audio earlier. Now that's a that's a tool we have where you can record your voice and see the words come out um, more like a, a text editor. And that is an awesome tool for an audio first workflow where you are going to create your audio first and then build your video off of that. So you're kind of hacking it where you're starting with a script, uh, but it's already recorded. Uh, but you can kind of get away with it in that instance. Yeah, I was actually going to mention uh, uh, Doug Brunner, who's our manager of our, our training team, instructional design team. He and I were working on a series, and that's we end up using that Google uh, speech to text to write a lot because we'd be talking about and we'd hash through like kind of the key points and what we were going to cover, and 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 we'd get to the point and and, and we'd be like, okay, Doug, just say it, and we just and we'd have to edit it like crazy to get it to be something that he could like use on camera. But like, because I, I couldn't necessarily just write for Doug because Doug has had a couple things that were like very specific about how you'd go about something because that's that's who he is, uh, mm -hmm. and it wasn't bad. It's just like I was struggling to get that capture that, and with him reading it was awesome because it it was just putting the words down. There's no punctuation, no capitalization, but I yeah I, I actually recommend that. I think it's a that's a such a huge time saver. The other thing is he could just kind of go through it. And we we could figure out if things flow or we need we, then we could just move things around as we need to. So uh, I, I really like that recommendation. I want to, a couple other questions I think are, are pertinent to what we're talking about. Uh, Sarte I think is how you say it is better to ask is it better to create a video first and then create a blog post or go from blog post to to mm -hmm. video like what do you guys recommend from from what you've seen? Would you rather have the blog post post then then create the video? Or would you want want a video to create a blog post around? You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna really like I'm gonna say something and then I'm gonna let Justin correct me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I think uh, I've liked the way we're doing it because as someone who again doesn't have a writing background, uh, it gives me a jumping off point. So if you're a good writer and you can write out a blog post or you can write out a script, it may not matter. Um, I think the nice thing for us has been. Uh, relying on those blog posts is kind of a starting point, an outline, a template, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's It's been great to then create the blo uh, the video from that. That being said, a lot of people are really good off the cuff. You know, they kind of, they outline their script, what they want to say, and they can just talk to the camera. Uh, I don't have those skills. I really work behind the camera. I've been in a lot of videos lately simply because of the, the state of the world that we're living in right now. Um, so I'm not kind of that off the cuff speaker. Like Matt has that gift. Matt can speak and, and ask questions and interview people and, and speak to his own knowledge, uh, knowledgeable topics. Um, for me, I want the script. <laughs> and so, uh, I would say whatever, uh, is written first, I still need the writing. So I think that's why for me, I would lean on the blog post because either way I need it written down. And I think the blog post, like Justin said, can go 2000 words into the topic and then you can take the best points from that. Um, or at least you, you feel like the most uh, topical points from that and turn it into a video. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I have done, I've done both. I think it really depends on what you're comfortable with sort of what Andy was talking about. Um, because I think both work really, really well. So if we wanted to say, create a quick tutorial, walking somebody how to do through how to do something. And we knew we wanted a blog and we wanted to get it out quick. I might actually record myself walking through it, take the audio, transcribe it, and then take that transcription and work my blog post off of that. So that's kind of the reverse of what Andy is talking about, where you would start with this sort of more polished um, text and then build your script off of that. It's a little bit more free form. Um, and I've seen success with that because you can just walk through and obviously you go through and you can edit out all the ums and, you know, the stutters and all of that stuff and make it sound more concise for your blog post. But that actually goes really fast for shorter videos. Now, if you're creating a long video with lots of scenes and, and it gets to be a little bit more heavy handed at that point, I, I would probably not start with the video and I would just write write your blog post, write your script and kind of go from there. But for a shorter video, especially a walkthrough where you want just text to support that, 
um, definitely you can just record yourself free form and then take the transcript and clean that out and you can get a really good um, post. The other thing out of that, especially if you're talking about creating a blog post or a tutorial off of that, is you can take all the screenshots from your recording that you did and those become the images for your blog post. So pro tip. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, what a great, what a great workflow, right? Like just save yourself a bunch of time, do it once. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I so, mean, especially you're going to need an outline either way. So, <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, why not capture it? Especially I can imagine uh, with t video, t like screen tutorials, right? Like you, you can capture that, mm -hmm. you can talk through it. Um, I'm pretty sure I've seen people create their tutorials that way. And they always go back and refine what's going to be said, but they just you know, record it and then they turn that into their kind of the basis for everything they're going to do. Because as Andy said early on, what if a process has a, a sp very specific name or it's moved, the button moved or a million other things that yep. can happen in software, just kind of life cycle of software, right? Yeah. So, so yep. let's, let's real quick, I want to just give a shout out to everybody that's watching. We got, I mean, we got a ton of people in here uh, tuning in. Uh, so guys, if you're in the chat today, feel free to leave comments, leave questions. We got help monitoring. So we'll try to get to all your guys' questions today. Also, if you want to let us know, where are you watching from today? We'd love to, to hear what, where you're coming from. Uh, let us know how you're creating, what kind of videos you're creating, what you need help with, with your script writing process. Um, and with that said, another com kind of a comment question here is uh, from Chris. He says, uh, or she says, sort of a tangential question. Since Andy was talking about it, do you ever get over hating the sound of your own recorded voice? People tell me it's fine, but editing my voiceover, I just can't get over it. It's the and worst. It's just the worst. No, it's terrible. Um, but I think the other thing too is it's because we don't hear ourselves. I, I don't know how many of you saw this video. I know I know we passed around internally a little bit about um, if you want to hear what you actually sound like and how other people hear you. Yep, Matt's. Is it is it in front of your ears or behind your ears? I thought it was in front of your ears. It might be where in you front block of your ears. off the sound, um, and and you basically are going to hear kind of the reverberate because we're hearing like a lot of reverberation within our skull, and so we we like I have a much deeper timber than uh, you know I hear when I record it. So um, I don't know what you guys are listening to, but it's not my voice. Uh, and, and honestly, I had four years of, of college where I worked in the radio station too. still hate my voice. Like it's just, it's, if you don't like your voice, you don't like your voice. What you have to realize is no one else cares. You're your own worst critic. No one else is listening to it and going, Oh, she's really nasally. He's really, you know, weird sounding. Like they hear you every day. You're the only one hearing you for the first time. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I will say, Andy, because I, I, I talk about this a, a lot with people, because and we actually did a whole thing where I, uh, one of the early episodes of the live stream, I talked about this, mm -hmm. but the, the, the thing to watch out for isn't necessarily the quality or sound of your voice. It's things that become, that are not necessarily your your voice, but that can become annoyances. Like I, an audio book I listened to one time, the guy had a whistle. Oh yeah, and 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 just try to avoid that if you can, or or just be mindful of like things like that, or just poor audio quality in general. But your voice mm -hmm. is your voice. I hear my voice, and I don't say I, I won't say I love it. I wish my I wish I had a much smoother voice, you know, a little, a little bit, a lot better voice. But like I think everyone said, you guys have heard me speak on stream on yeah. camera, and it is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's you know it's hard advice. It's, it's not great advice. Like no one feels good about this advice, but I will say, I, I feel like the reality is at the end of the day, you are who you are. People know who you are and just lean into it because that's, you've got no other options. <laughs> yep. It's, it's exactly right. It's, it's what you've got. You're working with it. Um, and I, sh I should take back a little bit of what I said. I say that I, you never get used to, you never get used to, or you never love it. I don't love it, but I actually am used to it now. I should say that. Um, you just, it doesn't bother me as much because there's just nothing I can do about it. Trust me, I tried those four years of radio every now and then I'd have a different voice and it was much worse. So just got to get an accent, you know, make one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've been told I have one, but I think it's just through the nose Midwestern. I don't know. Yeah, there we go. That's, that's, that's the accent right there. Yeah. Okay, so we started about talking about getting started with scripting. We've talked, you know, like we've talked about some processes. Um, let me ask you this, and you may or may not have a good answer, but how do you get better? How do you get faster? Because I, I feel like one of the things that comes up a lot with people saying, it's too much work to write a script. It's too hard. It takes too much time. You know, like, so I think we have, like, obviously if we can get faster and then maybe we even like benefits, like why is it worth the investment 
to be able to do that. Justin has sped me up. Um, I think Justin is uh, a, uh, trying to think, a proponent of templates, as he's mentioned, Mm -hmm. right? Um, I I mean, (laughs) what's the quote you shared on LinkedIn the other day where I was like, you're speaking to my soul. And it was something about the fact that like, there's nothing original out there. You're taking from someone else, just lean into it and take it and use it and make it your own. Um, And it's it's that idea of... um, I always want to start from scratch to my own detriment. I always want to write something original and thoughtful and, and it just kills me because then I spend two days on a script that should have taken me two hours. Um, so, so get over yourself. That's my, my own advice to me is get over myself uh, and realize that this topic has been covered before. No one needs to hear my deep thoughts. Really, they need to get into the topic and then to learn how to do A, B, and C. And I can, I can do that. Um, and Justin is actually written a template i mean basically every time i i um do these youtube videos now i'm working off the same template that he kind of set up initially which is um today i'm going to show you how to do da 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 hi i'm andy from techsmith uh where we help you show what you know and today we're going to talk about this and it's just kind of you go from there and then it's you know however many points you have maybe it's three maybe it's five maybe it's seven whatever your number of of topics you're going to cover there should be an outro where you explain um kind of where you can learn more or if you like this information you know give them a call to action but but either way there should be a template that i can start from so that i'm not just going hmm what paragraph should i write today no don't write a paragraph that's the other thing justin smacks my hand about a lot no writing paragraph so much <laughs> <laughs> right man, I, get, I get in trouble for that one He's, he's I'm, a tough. I guess, man. He, he, he's a tough, but it's it's made me so much better because I would spend so much time. I think for a while, Justin was like, "What is Andy doing? That's taking so long to get this script done," and like he'd whip out two scripts in the amount of time it would take me to start thinking about my first one. So, um, well, if I can interject here, I think and I'm going to summarize what you kind of said, Andy. I think one of the big things is that, especially for instructional information videos that are not entertainment, right? We don't have to make it like the most unique. It just has to be instructive or informative. It has to do that job. And of course, entertainment, it's fun, but like, don't, don't do, don't spend time on that. Spend time on getting the information out. I mean, your personality can come out through while you're teaching the thing. You know, if, if I'm saying, Hey, we're, we're making a, uh, a, quick video in today's example. Well, it's supposed to be quick, so let's get to the point, right? Like, I mean, your, your personality can come out in other ways and your inflection and your, um, you know, emphasis on, on different parts of the video, but you don't need to have your personality come out in the first three paragraphs because there shouldn't be a first three paragraphs. <laughs> it should just be <laughs> jumping into your video. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, it's just eliminating one more hang up that can occur when you're writing a script. And so, you know, until you start making dozens and dozens of videos like there is no reason you can't start essentially every single video the same way especially if you are creating a very particular type of video and it's actually beneficial because especially in an intro and this is where i probably spend 90 percent of my time on on scripts um that we put out on our youtube channel is is in the intros and trying to pare those down because the first 15 seconds of your video, you're going to either keep people interested enough to move on or they're going to bail because you didn't hook them. So you have to you have to be really, really clear. And that's where, especially in the intro, clarity will trump trying to be clever. And so mm-hmm. when when you're especially when you're thinking you're going to start writing scripts, you're going to you think you got to get it all out there in the front. That's kind of Andy's. Um, point there with you know writing paragraphs at at the intro and what you actually need to do is say in this video i'm going to show you the exact th- the exact same thing that was in the headline of this video so if you thought you yeah. were going to learn x i'm going to show you how to do x so then your brain instantly registers that okay this is where i'm supposed to be this is what they're going to teach me i'm ready to learn it mm-hmm. yeah i yeah. love that I, I love that clarity right like it's you are this is what you're going to get here's the promise Here's what I'm going to deliver. And there's nothing in between to get in between those two things. Mm-hmm. Clarity yeah, and brevity. You, yeah, I was going to say, if you, if you, if I am looking for help on a particular feature set or problem and they jump in and they start winding a little bit or going in, I'm, this is not the video for me. It's not helping me get what I want to do. And again, I think to Andy's point, like it is trying to find those points where you can 
put some entertainment value or put some personality, but especially, especially in the intro, get in there, tell them what you're going to teach them about and then get out and move on. Well, let me just yep. say this because your point there aligns perfectly with the video viewer study that TechSmith has run. And we talked about this data a couple, gosh, it's been a couple of weeks ago, but the number one reason people stop watching is the information wasn't, didn't feel relevant or didn't connect with what they needed, right? Like, so they're being led astray. So what you just said is not only, and we talk oftentimes about title, thumbnail, and description, mm -hmm. but what I'm now I'm hearing as an additional thing, and we don't, this is maybe a little bit looser than on data, but that first 15 seconds should also align with those. So then you've confirmed this, this, and this all actually are going to, I'm going to mm -hmm. actually going to get those things. That's, that's super insightful and interesting to me. Um, and, and a connection I hadn't made before. So that's awesome. Yeah. yeah we're learning right. live guys. This is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And I think too, don't forget, you know, even if you don't upload your own captions to your video, for example, you know, YouTube, if we're talking about YouTube, YouTube scraping, uh, the automated captions that they're creating for you. And so that, again, is another opportunity for, for uh, you know, your topic to kind of come out uh, in Google searches, right? If you're in a YouTube search. Um, so uh, if you're, if it's in your title, if it's in your description, it should be in the first, you know, two sentences of your video too. Makes a lot of sense. Okay, so as we're we're got about eight nine ish, ten, we'll we'll go as long as we need, but we got really a couple more minutes, right? Uh, I want to talk about the benefits because I think again, so we talked about kind of that process um, for for you, uh, uh, I think, and I want to look at it to two sides. So Andy, for you, I want you to be thinking about being on, on camera, behind the camera, and for Justin, I want you to be thinking about that kind of bigger global content picture because. And, you know, because I think we have a lot of people who are instructional designers, trainers, technical writers who are making video and, uh, and, and you know, they're not necessarily thinking about the SEO implications or kind of the spread because it's maybe internal. But I, I think it's important to understand those things. So, Andy, we'll start with you. Benefits for you both in front of and behind the camera to have a script or what would you tell someone like if someone says like, I don't think I need to write a script. How, how, what would you say to convince them that it would be probably worth their while? Well, for me, in front of the camera, I mean, I'm not operating without a script. I'm, I'm uh, floundering. I've tried it a number of times. It looks so easy. Uh, I get a topic in my head. I've even outlined things, and I go in front of the camera, and, man, I just go off course. I have no idea what I'm talking about or what I want to talk about anymore. I'm not a person who can hold to an outline in my head. I need it written down. Uh, and we have a, a teleprompter app on an iPad, you know, that kind of I can read off of. Um, as far as behind the camera, you know, when, when we're doing uh, a work and I've got someone that I'm directing, uh, it's incredibly beneficial for me because I may not have written it, I may not be the stakeholder in the project, but I'm there to get the stakeholder their desired outcome, and I'm hearing what the person on camera is saying, and I'm noticing that the inflection doesn't really line up with what they want to say, so I can kind of stop and pull them back a couple lines and say, hey, if you could reread this, and we really want to lean into that word or that phrase. Um, so having a script as someone who's directing a video really helps me kind of um, focus on the message, uh, and, and know what my stakeholder is trying to get uh, out of this video. Um, and it, honestly, it helps the person on camera too, because if you're reading a script that you didn't write, you're not the stakeholder for, you're not 100% sure, you know, if it's just a talent on screen, um, they may not know what you're hoping to get from this video. So they can use a little bit of direction as well. Um, for most of us, it's just us looking into a webcam, um, hopefully not as blurry as mine, um, but, but some kind of camera uh, as sharp as Matt's, hopefully, um, where, where you really can, um, you know what you want to say, you know what your point is, but a script is just going to keep you on message. It's going to keep you brief, hopefully, uh, if you've written it well, uh, and it's going to just get the point across so much easier than trying to jumble it together in your head while you're on camera. Because once that light comes on and the camera's recording, it's a different world than just talking about it at your desk. Yeah, and I will say, uh, the other thing uh, I found is you guys, especially like you and our other video people that have helped me with my script stuff, is that like I read a script and I don't know if I said the right words. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you, you, you can catch me. Almost amnesia, yeah, <laughs> when you're on camera of like, oh, I don't know what I just said or how I said it, but it's, the I words were there the right and it came out of my mouth. <laughs> Yeah. Or I said the word wrong and I won't notice it, but, but you can catch it because you have the script to follow along. So, right. so, 
so Justin, from your perspective with kind of this, the, the value of script outside of actually just creating the content for you, I mean, we've obviously talked about repurposing things in the blogs. Any other value that you would say that you think scripts have uh, for people who are interested in having their content found or even, I mean, we could even look if there are benefits internally to organizations as well. Yeah, I mean, again, from a search perspective, we, we sort of talked about, you know, repurposing content and that's, I guess that would be my larger, um, my larger piece of advice for folks as as they're looking to create the script is that script is more than just a script, and it, or, or it can be more than just a script if you want it to be. It can be a blog post. It can be several uh, social media posts. It can be, um, you know, uh, an internal email if you're trying to show somebody how to do something. You can. I think the more avenues and the more um, pieces of media that you can create around the topic, the better served you're going to be. It's sort of like we create these live streams. We turn these live streams into a video that goes on YouTube. We take those uh, video, we take the audio and cut it into a podcast, the visual launch podcast. And so I think it's that idea for, for this content as well. It's trying to not just create it once and let it sort of live there. Because honestly, people want to, depending even where they're at, they might want to consume that information in a different way. If I am looking for a very, uh, you know, definite, quick answer, I might just skim through some text and some bullet points that show me how to do a process. Whereas if I am have a little bit more time and I want to actually see the process hands-on, I, I might get more out of a video. So I think that's where just always be aware of, the different types of media that you can create out of that one thing. And that's where, whether, again, whether you're starting with a script or starting with a blog post or a tutorial, or you want to flip flop in between, I think just understanding how those things can work together to give you a better outcome in the end. That sounds like I a like whole nother. Said. Oh, I was going to say, it sounds like a whole nother episode we need to do. How many pieces there of content can we get from one thing? <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and he, he even said like internal email. And I'm thinking, man, that's true because even at TechSmith, you know, we've got, you know, however many employees here at TechSmith that may not realize we're doing these videos or may not realize we've got, you know, such and such topic covered as a video. And so it's like, oh, send it to the sales team and be like, hey, guys, if anyone's ever asking how to do A, B, and C, and I've done that before, um, and and a lot of times like, man, I didn't know we had these resources. That's fantastic because we especially are trying to constantly pump out resources. So it would be, you know, like drinking from a fire hydrant if we gave them everything we were doing. Um, but every now and then to remember to, hey, maybe I should collect a few and send them over to that team over there and see if they'd benefit them. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of ways you can repurpose con content, even internally. Yeah, absolutely. So... Uh, I want to keep going here. We've got some questions I want to go through. So if you guys are open for a question. So if you have questions, you want to put them in the mm -hmm. chat, feel free. We're going to take a few minutes to answer those, um, go through these best as we can. Bass asks, what do you think of the use of text to speech voices in videos? So obviously you've got speech to text, mm -hmm. we'll take your voice and turn it into text, mm -hmm. but you can go the other way and take text and turn it into uh, audio sounds of voice. So any thoughts or preferences on those? I mean, I have preferences as a viewer, um, but this is just me personally. It it feels like one of two things is happening. Either it feels disingenuous, but also I know sometimes it's a language barrier. Um, and so sometimes people are, you know, we talked about not liking the sound of our own voice. Maybe we're concerned about pronouncing words correctly or if we're, we're aiming at a different language than our native language. Um, I understand it, but I think you'd be surprised. People are more forgiving about accents and mispronounced words. Um, and, and not always. I mean, it is YouTube, especially if I'm if I'm talking specifically about YouTube or Facebook. You know, sometimes people can be cool, but that's what the delete button's for. Um, so, <laughs> uh, just kidding. Um, so, <laughs> I think I, I think it's important to remember though that people are going to be more forgiving about your minor mistakes um, if it's pronunciation of words. As far as the speech to text, though, personally, um, or text, excuse me, text to speech, um, I'm I'm not a fan. It feels disingenuous, and I'm more apt to click away faster. Yeah. I mean, there's always a reason to do something, right? Like have a reason sure. behind it. Have a good, I, I agree with you. I, I would prefer to hear someone's real voice. Um, but if I, I can, I know we had uh, a gentleman who is a Camtasia user and he lost it, literally lost his voice. Uh, oh, wow. illnesses yeah. And, and he uses speech to text all the time. And it's like, I mean, or text to speech, or we're going to get the backwards about 12 times. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, obviously that makes perfect sense, right? Like that's his only right. avenue to communicate in that way. He makes videos that way. But like, have I think as long as you have a really justifiable purpose and reason, mm -hmm. I, I think it can be okay 
to to um their point i i just but be you like yeah. oh, i think that's the thing about videos i would much rather connect with you as a person even if i can't see your face it's a screen video um mm-hmm. i'd like to hear hear those words so i'm with i'm with you andy i think yeah. um have a purpose though and you can justify it yeah uh let's see next question uh is the best is it best this is from Fred. Hey, Fred. Is it best to practice the pace of recording your script to better match your video for syncing purposes? This is what I try to do when it comes to timing and still have to do some adjusting. So when you're using a script, obviously timing can be an issue, right? Like if you've got a, cert- a sequence of events that takes X amount of time because it's pages have to load or something has to open. How, how do you guys, how do you handle that as, as you're writing scripts? Especially maybe even for you, Justin, when you're, you know, you're not, you're not building the video. You just have, you're just writing the words that are going to be said. Yeah, I think, and again, Andy, feel free to chime in after this. For me, that's where the the audio first workflow can be really beneficial because you can you can create your entire script, record it all, get it nice and clean, and then add in the other pieces after the fact. And that that is that's sort of the the way I create my videos because I find it to be faster. And and when I don't do that it gets a lot harder, I think, to Fred's point, where it gets a lot harder to try to time all those out and piece it all together and make sure it all matches. And then I've got this really long loading screen that I got to cut down and match up and make that work. Um, That's kind of my take. I don't know if Andy has has another one. I mean, I have a different perspective in that I'm a professional video editor. And so I know not everyone who's making these videos is a professional video editor, and they just want to record something and read the script and be done with it. So I think there's two different things at play here one it's the pacing of the script but two it's the to edit your video down um so you know if we're talking about a load screen that takes a long time or if we're talking about um, a process that we may not have timed right you can edit all that down you can use you know camtasia you can use clip speed to speed it up you can you can extend a frame to kind of pause on it and hold um the the video frame there's no reason to necessarily get those things off unless you really are just like, I don't have time to edit. I need to do this in one take and get it done. It's a different story. Um, and then you really do need to focus on your script and your process matching the pace of um, of the software, if that's what you're demonstrating. But for me, again, like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be editing everything I do. So that's not really an issue if I need to kind of pause. I can also cut back, you know, for the YouTube videos, as an example, um, I'm on screen talking to the camera, but we're also demonstrating something with full screen video from time to time, you know, out of out of Camtasia or out of uh, whatever we're showing at that time. So I can cut back and forth if I need to stop showing the Camtasia screen because the process is really over, then we can cut back and you can look at me for a second and then we'll cut back to the next step of the process in Camtasia. Um, So it doesn't have to be one long stream of, you know, video. I'm just going to add here because I think from my, because I've made a lot of tutorials in my life. And the one thing that we did, I think that's slightly different than what we've already said is that we would record the audio line by line versus just try to read through it. Right. Like mm-hmm. say the mm-hmm. sentence or say the action, even if it's a break in the, and then pause. And then I have to, it means more editing. I don't want to be clear. You got to edit yep. more, but just then you've got these segments and you're just basically piecing the segments together timing wise And, you know, you never want like a broken phrase, like where it's like kind of middle. So you can, you try to, that's why I I say sentence usually is edit, edit by the sentence versus edit by the piece. Um, And I think timing works better there. So. No, that's good too for audio first, especially. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. A couple of, we got, wow, we got lots of questions. Uh, Teresa says, I'd prefer not to script, but the truth is it makes it much easier to get feedback colleague from colleagues ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And it definitely cuts down on the post uh, production editing Mm -hmm. required. It also makes closed captions a thousand times easier to do afterwards. She says, I'm a recent convert. So what a great co- – Teresa, yeah. we're, we're with you. Welcome to the club. Welcome to the club, yep. <laughs> <laughs> We've got jackets. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll have to get those you know, sent out. I do jackets. I made a promise. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Jane, hi, Jane. I hope you're well. Uh, says, uh, for most of my videos, I use a script to keep me on point and avoid missing important information. It takes effort and practice to sound authentic and natural, though. Yeah. No, yeah, that's absolutely mm-hmm. true. I think, I mean, that's, it's funny because, like, if anyone has, any of the videos I've done on YouTube, it feels scripted to me personally. Maybe I'm my own, again, I'm my own worst critic. Um, but here we are having a natural conversation. And this is what I want those videos to sound like. I want it to sound like a conversation. 
But yeah, when you're reading a script, that's something you just, I mean, it's not always going to be as natural. You do your best. Well, well, there's a different skill there, right? There's the writing this script, which we've been talking about. And then there's a whole other Mm -hmm. skill set that I think takes tons and tons and tons of practice is reading from a teleprompter. Yep. (laughs) It's not easy. It is not easy. As someone who's directed people on teleprompters and gotten frustrated with them, so sorry, Matt, um, then I would I can tell you now, having been in front of the camera and had the teleprompter just taunting me, it's a different skill set, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got it. it it's, it's a whole different world. And But that's practice, right? It's like everything else. It's a skill. It can, you can learn, but you yeah. have to learn to be able to read and speak differently than we were used to, right? Like when you're in school you, and you're reading out loud in class or whatever, you're, you kind of read however, and we don't read a lot of things out loud for kind of the acting. You got to act. You got to put emotion into it. You got to put feeling into it. Even if it's technical stuff, it can't just be, I'm just reading it like um, I'd read anything else. And it's even worse because you're trying to act like yourself, which is impossible to do. <laughs> I think, yeah, I was going to say, I think, again, for maybe, because I am not a professional video editor, but I do make videos, especially for internal purposes and for showing people how to do things. And I, I think one of the things, you know, if you're talking about starting to just make these videos in this way and you, and you are worried about being on camera and trying to read a teleprompter, the, the thing that got me to be able to do it is to just do the intro on camera and then do the rest of the video as the screen recording and talking through what's happening and then maybe the outro. Um, that, that's the feedback I can give as, as a non-video professional. And that way it takes a little bit of the stress off of being like, how much do I have to be on camera here? But that way it still lets people see your face. And I think that's there's benefit in there. Um, but then I have to memorize one line and I can do that. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's still engaging because you get that human face. Yep. Yeah. Okay, we're running out of time, but I want to get to this next question and then we'll, we'll, we'll see where we're at. But uh, Chris Blackwell says, a question for Andy, when it, what's an acceptable amount of time uh, to, a, to not have voiceover while showing an operation uh, and B, to hold on frame while talking? So like we've got points where the, it can yeah. be quiet and then there's points where the, nothing is happening, but you can just talk. I am going to lean. Oof, that's, that's a great question. Um, I think silence can kill you um, because you'd be surprised how many people are really just listening. And, and so when you stop, uh, e- even if they're watching, they might be doing ta- – we're big into multitasking nowadays, right? And so people are trying to accomplish – one, and suddenly suddenly the audio stops. It's going gonna, it's gonna to distract them. It's going to make them think either something's wrong with it. I think it's too much of a distraction to have a long pause uh, from your voice when you're showing something on screen. I would almost prefer to have some kind of – banter or something or maybe uh, if you do have to um have a long pause increase the volume of the music to kind of indicate that i know i've stopped uh this is something i want you to see and so so at least there's kind of a balance there right so the voice comes down the music goes up um as far as the reverse of it happening where you're talking and nothing's happening i think that's more forgivable again because i think people are more apt to listen than they are to to by default watch over um so i think i think you're okay to to um, kind of talk on a frozen frame. I wouldn't leave the frame frozen for too long either, though, because you don't want people thinking that something's glitched. So maybe you could add a smooth um, pan out, just a slow zoom out from the screen or a slow zoom in if you're zooming into something. Um, you don't want to leave it just kind of stock still for too long or they probably will think something went wrong. We're frozen. Yeah, you know, like no, right? <laughs> or, or like a blurry screen. Like just, I can't get over. I'm going to hang up and call that case. It's ridiculous. So the other so thing. So sorry I, to everyone. I, I, no, you're fine, Andy. The, the other thing I'll say to that, <laughs> I think this is important, is in tutorials in particular, is you, you don't want long because if you're showing me a bunch of steps without guiding me, I'm going to lose track of what step and where I'm supposed yeah. to be in context. And so like keep those steps in that action close together. Like say what you're going to do, show them or show them and then say what you did, but like, or at the same time. But like, I I think far too often what happens is you're trying to show too much, like Mm -hmm. narrate that stuff. Pretend they can't, they can't see it and say like, Hey, I'm going to do this. Don't assume they're following because I see, and we're Mm -hmm. guilty of this uh, text with too, is those, these side, the silent videos. That's like a tech support kind of style and just helping me see something. I have a hard time with those because I'm like, where is it going? I, I can't yeah. predict and the voice can help me guide me and lead me in, in a way that's really important. So absolutely true. Yeah. 
gentlemen, uh, we're gonna. We're, that was probably really loud. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> no. We got lots of other comments here. Uh, I want to thank everyone for the sharing their feedback. I'm, we're re I'm reading through a lot of these. This has been a great conversation in the chat. Thank you all for joining us today. Andy, Justin, you guys are fantastic. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and insights with us today. Before we go, uh, you get like 10, 15 seconds. Last piece of advice or wisdom that you'd want to share that you didn't get a chance to talk about with scripts. Hmm. You know, I'm going right, to... Time's I'm up. Thank give, you for... No, yeah, I'm right. Kidding, I'm kidding. Kidding. <laughs> uh, for, for me, one thing I've been doing a lot lately is uh, I don't always take the time to storyboard. And so in my script, I will have a left-hand column, a very narrow left-hand column uh, that gives me kind of a cues for what I hope to see on screen here. So I think as much as, you know, we talked about this earlier with Matt, uh, learning that he could write something, but it didn't always come with a visual cue. Give yourself a visual cue. What are you actually going to be showing on screen? It's almost just as important as your uh, script. And now my video clears up right at the end of our time together. That's great. Perfect. Perfect time. <laughs> <laughs> the webinar's over. That's right. Exactly right. That's I was right. like, oh, my, my wife's done with the webinar. Yep. I, I think my, my tip is, is more broad, but don't skip your your script. Don't skip the script. Yeah. And I think because somebody had mentioned that in one of the comments where they don't like doing it. And look, I don't always like doing it either. And depending on what the video is, I don't do a script. But if, especially if it's external, if it's something you want to be a little bit more long lasting, don't script, don't uh, skimp on writing your script because it'll make everything following your script writing go that much faster. Um, yeah. it, it will it will speed up the entire process, even if the getting started piece feels like it takes longer than it should. Awesome mm -hmm. advice from both of you. Thank you both so much for joining us here in the Visual Lounge. Thanks again for everybody tuning in today. Stick around for a second. We're gonna we're gonna jump uh, into real quick. We're gonna wrap up the week with what's new at TechSmith. We didn't do it last week, so we got a few things to go over, but we want to give you a sense of some great content that's available for you outside of the Visual Lounge. Again, thanks to Andy Owen and, Owen and Justin Simon. They're both fantastic. You can find them on social. Go follow them on LinkedIn. They've got really great stuff going on over there. They're talking about doing their jobs type of posts that are going to be valuable for everyone. And I learn a lot from them every single day. So with that said, though, let's jump into what's new at TechSmith. All right, so if you're you know, a follower of the TechSmith blog, a lot of this is gonna look very familiar. Let me see, I'm gonna do that thing where I share my screen. Uh, so let's, you know, it's been, a, like I said, it's been a, it's been a week. A lot, lot's changed around my house and uh, trying to figure out where everything is. So gotta find the right, there we go. We got the right thing here. So let me get this out of the way. So if you go out to techsmith.com slash blog, there's tons of great content every week. Almost every single day of the week, we are putting out new content that you can have. Uh, some of it's content, if you don't follow the Visual Lounge, you'll see that it's repurposed content like we talked a lot about today. We've got one about simplified user interfaces. And if you don't know about simplified user interfaces, if you're making screenshots and you've got to reuse them or you want them to be f more focused on a single thing, go check out this, this video and the podcast because there is a lot of really great information. We talked to Anton Bolin, who's another a uh, co work colleague of mine at TechSmith, and you can see here's a great example of uh, that simplified user interface. Just look how that pops, right? Imagine you can even put that in video to really emphasize the key points without losing context. So there's one of the, the things that's new. We also got this how to make a YouTube video beginner's guide. Interested in getting started on YouTube, making some videos, we got a free template. Oh, and look at that. It is a clear picture of Andy Owen. And so we got <laughs> Andy there. I think, Eddie, they can hear you. So if you want to add yeah. commentary here, you can. <laughs> I, I recorded it well, so there's no blurry videos there. But no, we actually, uh, this was this was a fun video to make. And uh, as it says on the thumbnail there, we included a free template so that this is one that you can follow along with. You can download the the source file and actually follow along with it. Yeah. And look, look at that. Look at all the steps. It's going to walk you step by step through this process. So that, and, and you know, let's let's be clear. If you're making a video for YouTube, that might be slightly different than if you're making one for your internal audience. And the things you gotta consider are basically because of the YouTube platform. It is a thing unto itself, as many YouTubers will tell you. Then we got this one, tools you need to create awesome inst visual instructions. And we go here, you can see here, look at this, another video from the Visual Lounge. 
Uh, we talk you through some template stuff that you can use in Snagit 2021, which is the newest version of Snagit. If you haven't checked it out, please do so. It's a fantastic version. I, I love going through and I've actually used this template feature so many times more now just because I can move things around. It's a lot easier to use. Uh, and you, then you can actually take that and turn it into a video or make a video and turn it into a template so you can great, make great job aids. So those are just a few of the things that are new here at TechSmith. Uh, Andy, I would bring you up, but I'm afraid that we're going to get a weird screen here. Let's try it. Nope, that's just Justin. Look at that. There's oh, Andy. I look less blurry though. There, so. <laughs> look, you look you look less less blurry, and now look, we got blurry. Justin's gone. He had he had work to do. So, oh, uh, thanks everybody for tuning in today. If you missed the live episode, here's the thing. You can go back and watch what Andy, Justin, and I talked about. It's going to be live for a little bit, and then we're going to have a, a, a an edited version, cut out some of the beginning and the end stuff, make it a little easier to watch. And But if that's not your thing and you just want to listen to it because you're doing, uh, let's see, what, what kind of things can we do these days? You can do yard work. You can do in house chores. You can go for a long drive. Yeah. Not so you much can you go can for do. a drive in a circle. <laughs> just around the roundabout. Look, kids, Big Ben. Uh <laughs> <laughs> you know, what, wherever you go, and if you want to listen to podcasts, the Visual Lounge podcast is available. Go to any of your favorite podcast platforms and you can download our episodes. I think we're on episode 16 or 15, 16 already, which is crazy, but we'd love to have you subscribe. Leave us a rating. Let us know what you're thinking. And, and if you're getting value out of today's episode on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, let us know. We want to know what your comments, questions, thoughts are, and we'll be happy to do our best to respond to those. And we'll be back next week with another great episode. And thank you ever once again to Andy and Justin for, for joining me and putting up with a little bit of the madness and craziness as technology always goes wrong at the beginning. So take care, everybody, and have a great week.